This is CUNY TV, the City University of New York. Eldridge, welcome to Eldridge and Company. Not many people are as lucky as Loretta Swit. She's a joyful actor, an accomplished singer and dancer, a wonderful artist, and a passionate lover of animals, and she's my guest today. Indeed, I am. So I understand mm. that when you were seven, you were the Snow Queen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going back that far, are we? And okay. it's never changed, right? Uh, yes, right. <laughs> I Don't I look right, like right. a snow bunny? <laughs> Uh, well, the weather changed on us, so I so thought, this is my Dr. Zhivago look. And it's not fur. Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, I take every opportunity I can to wear my fake furs because they're so beautiful, and, and it's important for women out there to know that yeah, this is how it looks, and, you know, nothing died to make this. A lot of acrylics, yeah, you know, maybe. Right. But it doesn't need storage. Right. It doesn't smell in the rain. It <laughs> does. Yeah, you know, I mean, there are so many advantages, and it's warm. Actually, and nobody's life warm. went into it. <laughs> most exactly. importantly, exactly. So you knew you were going to be an actor right away. Always, yes. Yeah. Uh, the the thought was, I'm going to try. No, it was. This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> but the difference <clears throat> when mom was, I blame a lot of this on my mother, who was a movie buff, and we would oh. go to two. Two double features. That's uh, two double days. four films. That's right. In one day, come out, have a little nosh. Usually Chinese ended with rice pudding without raisins, <laughs> and go back into another double feature. Oh, that's so great. You were so lucky. <laughs> uh, that was our big bonding issue. I mean, uh -huh. that mom and I with movies. To the end, when she'd come and stay with me. We would watch movies until 2, 3 That's in the morning. Incredible. I'd run tapes. And one day we were watching uh, Titanic. And I thought, Mom! I said, <laughs> now, we should, we should preface the whole thing by saying that Mom just died last July, and she was going to be 106. Yeah. So this library of knowledge is my little mother sitting next to me, just sitting up in big bed, you know, watching right. movies. And it occurred to me to ask her, you know, about... Yeah. Titanic. Oh, I mean, you were yip, there. Yip, 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 yip. You know, it was very oh. exciting. Oh, that's and so she said, "Oh well, you know, what? What do you want?" And I said, "You know, tell me about when when you when you uh, heard it on the radio." She said, "We didn't have a radio." <laughs> I said, "We couldn't afford a radio," uh. and it took me back into uh. her world in a way that I had not really visualized. Mm. I said, "Well." So when you saw it in the papers, and she said, mm. said you couldn't afford, that's right. She said when she was 14, her mother said, Doroboti, Doroboti. Uh -huh. So my mother started working. That means go to work in uh -huh. Polish. Uh -huh. She started working when she was 14 years old. Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah. So, but you inherited then a sort of work ethic because you work all the time. I, I love, I love work. Yeah. I love my work. The right. difference, I think, was that mom just worked to help just the to family. It. it was yeah. a big family. But I, um, I'm living my dream because all my life I wanted to be an actor, you know, or be in the arts, but primarily uh, So how did you start? Actor. You went to Hollywood? No, not at all. Oh, wow, no. <laughs> uh, Susan Hayward became a very, very dear friend of mine when we were doing MAME together. She was my MAME, and I was her Agnes Gooch. And she was a tiny little thing, yeah. and she'd look up to me and call me her little Gooch. She was adorable. <laughs> I adored her. And she would always say, you know, don't, don't go to that place without a contract, without them saying... This is what this. you're going to do when you, she said, it's a uh, top. So you met her in the theater then? Uh, we did, actually, we did a tab version of MAME at Caesars Palace. Uh, how did Las you start Vegas. this musical stuff? You went to school. With uh, well, uh, actually, um, I sang in the choir through, throughout my school days. Uh -huh. And uh, you have to understand, I come from a neighborhood that preached singing is praying twice. Uh -huh. So everybody what sang. Neighborhood? Passaic, New Jersey, New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we went to uh, 
some of the schools are gone at this point, but Holy Rosary Grammar School was my grammar <laughs> school. We used to call it Holy Rollers. <laughs> 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 and I lived about a block, block and a half away. My father was very active in the, uh, the community, the church community. He uh, was an upholsterer. He made furniture for the convent, for the oh, rectory, yeah. for the, and my mother always used to say, everybody's first, look at my furniture, you know, <laughs> what, how about a new sofa it's here like for you? It's the shoemaker, right, that Ab we used to say. Absolutely. So you went, so you studied uh, dr uh, theater, th singing and dancing, or um, drama? I, my acting? mother, again, see, she, yeah. why she objected when I made my big announcement, yeah. I have no idea, because she trained me yeah. to right. go into the theater. So she put me in dancing school as soon as I could walk. Uh -huh. I was, uh, I ruined my feet. I mean, I was on toe shoes, but, uh -huh. but I would then take what I learned to the school and I would teach children. And I would, um, we would do concerts and programs. So, so, and so I was already yeah. instructing so you were a leader. <laughs> and yes, and performing and, and teaching groups. So then you went to, to you went to uh, casting calls? No, Oh no, not there. So how There's did you land up no with Mame? No such thing in, in Passaic. No, I mean this once you got out of This is way later. Yeah. Okay, how did I, I went, oh, it's a, actually a beautiful story. Gene Sachs, whom I loved, wow, what a director and what a wonderful human being. I adored him. Gene Sachs was uh, at the audition. I went to read for Sally Cato in Mame. She's that hot-blooded uh, Southern Belle that yeah. wants to marry Bo, but Mame gets Bo. <laughs> so I read for Sally, and um, Jean came to the uh, stage where I was, and uh, I looked down. He said, um, the problem here, he said, that was fine, and you'd, you'd make a good Sally Cato, except we're hiring a Sally to understudy Mame, and you're too young to play Mame. Probably the last time I ever heard that. But anyway, <laughs> he said, but I want you to do something for me. I want you to study Gooch and, and Gooch's Lament, you know, that difficult yes, song, What right. Do I Do Now? And come back next week and sing it for me and I'll, I'll, we'll read Gooch. And I said, fine, okay. It was so out of left field because the five producers said, and Gene said, Show me in the script where it says Gooch is an old, ugly person. Show me in the script and I will give this idea up. He said, she's peculiar and that actor can be peculiar. I know it. I know she That's can so act great. it. So when he told me that, I said, you thought I was peculiar? <laughs> you know, <he laughs> Thank you, I think. <laughs> so um, I did. I came yeah. back and, um, and sang for yeah. him and uh, got, the got the role. Yes. So that began. That was my very first musical. Yeah except for like yeah. classes and stuff like that. And uh, we went out on tour. My first MAME was Celeste Holm. Oh, We're great. still great friends. Yeah. And um, then when we came back from the tour, they, they uh, wanted Susan Hayward to do it in, uh, in the, the tab version means you, you do it twice a day in Las Vegas, ah. seven days a week. Oh God, so that's a lot of work. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what is this, is this weird? Yeah. So, um, but Susie, Susie was great. Susie Q, I called her Susie Q, and she was then she was married to a lovely man living in Fort Lauderdale, but she also had a brain tumor, and they had given her six months to live. She took the job because she knew that when she focused on MAME and hard work, she, she was going to outfox the doctors, and she did. That's she okay. lived two years Actually, longer. I remember when she died because she was such a vibrant. I loved oh. her, too. So you somehow you then got to Hollywood, but that means you yes. went on a contract. Actually, <laughs> actually, what happened was yes, yeah, straight from Las Vegas, I had done um, a play with a gal who lived in Hollywood, and she we kept in touch. And she said, "Are you actually going to just get right on a plane and go straight home after working seven days a week for six yeah. months? I get, are you crazy? She said, at least come here for a little holiday." So I did. I came to California, and um, she, uh, she had a good friend at CBS, a casting director. She said, why don't you at least go and meet her because you're such a good, healthy-looking pioneer type yeah. for Westerns, right. you know, Gunsmoke. Right. So I did. 
and in those days you carried around a portfolio of your oh, pictures <laughs> in, in your work, you yeah, know? Yeah. So uh, I um, went in to meet Pam Polifroni. She's uh, retired now, but she was the casting director at CBS. She did Hawaii Five-0 and Gunsmoke, and uh, I mean, she and she was great at her job. She she would watch um, a commercial, and she would tell you who who was in the background. I mean, she knew yeah. she was a great casting person. So um, we're talking. She said, "I know you," and I. Said, you don't know me, I'm nobody. You don't, you, know, you never heard of me. She, I know you. And I said, anyway, want to see my book? And she said, she saw Gooch. She okay. said, while you're here in town, you need to call this agent. He was in my office raving about you. He had gone to see Mame, yeah. Susan, and he, he said that Fabulous. gal playing Gooch was, you know, and he went yeah, on and on. Fabulous. And she said, it was more than he's you're not his client he yeah. wasn't trying to sell me yeah. but he's so laid back as a person he was so ebullient you know so uh so i did i called him and he said yeah kid i think you were terrific very damon runyon kind of character he was uh, yeah i think you're terrific let's have lunch so we had lunch <laughs> and he said here's the thing uh you don't know how it works out here this is not my my office there are five of us and each one of us cover that and this like like Arnie covers yeah. Universal and ABC or whatever I cover Paramount and CBS and, and you know and he explained the yeah, geographics the yeah. so he said I will work with you they won't sign you because they don't know your work I do but I'm not enough uh, he said so I will work with you but it will be limited to what I cover. But, he said, in this, we, we, had, we wanted it on our stones. But maybe we'll get lucky, he said. <laughs> so he it. sent me to read for Philip Leacock, great, great English director, just wonderful, uh, for a gun smoke. And there you were. Huh? And I read my heart out, <laughs> and Philip loved, loved what I did. And I ran home, and the phone was ringing as I ran up the stairs. And it was Fred saying, well, kid, you got lucky. I said, I got it. He said, you sure did. And he thinks you're terrific. And you yeah. know, so, um, so you bef yes, before I finished Gunsmoke, uh, Fred sent me to Paramount to read for a Mannix. And, um, uh, I, it's like yesterday. Yeah. Mm, yes. You went from. Yeah. I went from one to the other. Um, I, I, before I finished Gunsmoke, we knew that I was going to be doing that episode of Mannix. Michael O'Herlihy was the director, and uh, I went in. I sat down. I read for him, and he was a tease. He kept calling me Swift. He says, "So, Miss Swift, what kind of name is Miss Swift? What is? What is? What?" <laughs> Who are you? You know, I thought this man doesn't like me. Right. I didn't know that he was kind of a Don Rickles oh, tease. Yeah. You know, yeah. Don teases you because yeah. he loves you. Yeah. If he doesn't, he doesn't like you. Then you so, don't like you. so because I later I asked Michael, I said, Michael, I didn't think I was going to get the job. I didn't think you liked me. He said, how, how could you miss it? I was teasing you. I wouldn't do you, you know. Yeah. So uh, we worked together again uh, a few times after that. When I went into MASH, Gene Reynolds was so gracious, so generous. He said, if any of you guys have favorite directors you want to recommend, please, you know, Come in we're, we're, you know. Different directors so different I, episodes. yes, I asked for Lee Phillips, oh, I great. asked for uh, uh, Jackie Cooper, and I asked <laughs> for um, uh, Michael O'Herlihy. Does it bother you that people look at MASH as like the most important part of your life when you've done all these other wonderful things? Uh, I, we don't know how people regard yeah. that. I know MASH is a phenomenon. Yeah. That I'm attached to it is a gift as far as I'm concerned. If that's how they choose to remember me or label me, we are a country who labels. Yeah. I mean, that's how it is. 
I look in a TV guide and I see Sayonara, Marlon Brando, parentheses, the Godfather. Like, I don't know who, Mar <laughs> I mean, who, can we find some one that person in the universe? Yes. Who doesn't? So, but that's yeah. what we do. Yeah. Um, it's it uh, Loretta Swit, uh, Alan Alda, parentheses, yeah. MASH. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was an incredible experience, right? Oh, every day. But I've heard also that you were so responsible for the development of uh, Major Houlihan. Yeah, sure I was. We all, we all were responsible feel, though, for How did you feel being the woman in this play that oh, it was, was great. a macho <laughs> thing? Uh, it, uh, fortunately, the men I worked with didn't have uh, testosterone problems. Uh, yeah. They were not, you know, right. and I, I had, so you felt I like could an talk. Equal with this them. is my, my cast, the cast, right. my colleagues. Uh, there were maybe a few bits and pieces uh, with uh, writers and so forth where you had to, as a woman, be careful not to uh, not to be too aggressive with your ideas because you, you were like the soft it. voice with the soft body. And yeah. well, it was the '70s, so yeah. or, you know women were not as empowered as they have right. become, and uh, you did really need to tread lighter. Um, um, I, but you I were just, never uh, intimidated by Sure I was. Oh, you were? Sure I was. We yeah. all were, huh? Um, <laughs> but, but you had to fight through. I had to fight through it because I loved being there and I wanted to do it and I wanted to do it as best I could. Um, Alan, when he talks about what I did, said um, I was right in fighting for this because you, you, uh, she would have remained a one-joke character yeah. if I had not said, I, you know, please right. help me here. Now, part of them, they partially understood what they were doing to me. They were writing Margaret intelligently, yeah. funny, but she was, a, she was a terrific nurse. She took great pride in her work. She had some emotional problems. They made her the only girl child of a, um, of a colonel, general, yeah, yeah, a general, and um, was he, yeah, it was a general. So um, there, were, there were issues, but they m teamed her with Larry Linville, wonderful actor, amazing actor, whom they wrote dumber and sillier every episode. So. Now, initially, <laughs> it worked because we were yeah. clowning and so yeah. forth, and then it got more and more difficult because he was addressing all of his issues with the character and, and fulfilling them. And I was trying to fulfill mine. And when I would go on tour, people would literally ask me why I was with this character. They, so I would come back with those stories and everybody would poo poo, they yeah, it's their yeah. fans. No, 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 you've got to pay attention to this. I, as the actor, cannot figure out why my character is still, still in this relationship. In this relationship. <laughs> There's nothing in it for me, guys. He's <laughs> married with no intentions of getting a divorce. He's not a good doctor. That was the crux. I can't, how can she justify, continue to be, be with him because he's clumsy and they, and they would make jokes about him, how inept he was. And you were the best of nurses. So exactly, so it went on and on and then there would be episodes where I had to deal with him and his his ineptness as the head nurse. You know, this is what you did. You caused an infection and the patient nearly died from perit peritonitis. So, uh, so I uh, would go into meetings like, please, you've got to help me find a way. Either, either he's got to get smarter, I've got to get dumber. <laughs> you know, it's not working anymore, guys. And um, I was on hiatus. I came to New York for my first, well, was technically not my first Broadway show, uh, but, but it was on stage. My, technically, my first Broadway show was an understudy, Sandy Dennis's yeah. understudy in, in uh, Any Wednesday. Any Wednesday. Yeah. So I was here, and the, the boys, <laughs> the, the writers, and Gene and Larry called me and said, OK, we're all here, and uh, we want to talk about what's going to come up now. What, what, how do you, what do you see? And we'll talk about what we see. and you know, and, Okay, I said, really simple. I think she needs to break off with Frank. <laughs> 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 with Frank. And she needs to go to Japan, Tokyo, for some R&R. &R, and she has to meet a dazzling 
somebody who outranks Frank, somebody who's competent and, yeah. you know, right. uh, then what? And she gets engaged. Now, I said, knowing Larry Linville, can you imagine how funny he's going to be when I come back yep, with, with an engagement <laughs> ring? He is going to tear off the doors to the yeah. mess tent, which is exactly what, what he, he did. did. So, great. so, yeah. so, uh, I, so Jean said, and then what? I said, and then we get married. And Jean said, oh, sweetheart, that's so permanent. I said, Jean, are you divorced? <laughs> and everybody <laughs> laughed. I said, no. Then I find out that he's been cheating on me and I get divorced and I'm back in town. Actually, when all that happened, the episode where I left my husband was called Hot Lips is Back in Town. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great experience. It was, and there, yeah. you know, it's, you think uh, you can't top that. It's um, from day one, we hit the ground running yeah. this ensemble connected and bonded and had grips to their character and a, but the writing so you, you have, you to, have everybody. to go back the yeah. writing if we didn't have the words yeah. didn't matter yeah. how good we were the words the writers you had Larry Gelbart yeah. please oh I, I had an office at CBS next to him when he was doing you'll never get rich which was a Phil Silver show mm -hmm. that was hysterical everybody was laughing all day long the writers they're sitting in the room laughing Let's go on because we're running out of time. Okay. Oh now goodness. we started this mm. with your with my outfit. fake fur. <laughs> yes, and you're yeah. st uh, let's just say you're still acting all over the place. Yes, uh, you were mm -hmm. recently. When were you last in Chicago? Um, doing Love Loss and What I Wore. Yeah, and then I took it on tour. Uh -huh. I was back. I did came back to New York and did it for uh -huh. another month, and then we took it on tour. Right. Marvelous company of yeah. women, just great, um, and. Um, we went to Arizona, um, places Florida, we had North Carolina, Detroit, and then I came back here, and then I went to San Diego for a big Petco gala. Now, Petco is, um, as you know, a, at the forefront of uh, animal care and animal rescue, animal, animal care, and uh, we are um, um, blessed with an association with them, Actors and Others for Animals, where I serve on the board as first vice president. So I, I was there and Betty White, bless her heart, uh, gave us her presence. We honored her and everybody in the whole world came and bought tickets mm -hmm. and all of that money goes to um, yeah. our animals, yeah. you know. So a, a, lot of my, um, a lot of my time and my talents go to my charities. And you have a website. I have a website on which they will find a painting that I What's did. What's it called? It's website. called www.switheart.com. S W I T H E A R T H-E-A-R-T.com. It's um, um, one of my, uh, my pet <laughs> organizations, no pun intended, is Search Dog Rescue Foundation. Because I worked at 9-11 and I worked with some of these incredible heroes, these animals mm -hmm. and their handlers. Uh, you can't imagine. I have video of those guys digging teenage girls out of the rubble mm -hmm. in Haiti. I mean, they're amazing, but they're mortal. And we have just about eight months ago, we lost to normal death, normal yeah. passing, the last of the 9-11 oh, right? rescue dogs. So we oh. need to keep rescuing babies, right. training them and sending them out. They're deployed all over the world. And uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it, it's essential. So my part in raising the funds for the training is selling this painting. It's Which a print, of course. something we haven't discussed is your artwork. Right. You're an so, accomplished artist. Well, I don't know how I'm untrained, but I am you accomplished. I have, I have accomplished a great <laughs> deal with my artwork, but it, uh, a lot of that, that money I raise from the artwork goes to the various organizations that I work with. And, uh, and it means a lot, but it, it, people get something. It's not something for nothing. It's, you know, they're contributing, and at the same time, they have this wonderful memento. So this organization, and I'll explain it on your website of mm -hmm. what they do. Oh yes. But this is this is really. Uh, yeah, the tra I've been at the the training center is in is is in Ojai, and I've watched them uh, the train dogs. Yeah. They're these big big paws climbing up a narrow ladder, uh -uh. and oh 
Oh, they're and just And they're dogs amazing. that have been rescued from other people. From, they're not, from puppyhood. They're, yeah. <laughs> from puppyhood. So That's great. the painting. The yeah. painting is this little Labrador <laughs> dog waiting to see if he made the grade because they have, you know, every yeah. little puppy it's is not uh, <laughs> qualified. Yeah. And interestingly, they look for the hyper guys, not the little sublime yeah. th that's a little uh, lap sitter. They want so, the, these, these, these energetic guys. Cute yes, little exactly. Yes. So cute. So but they are just there, right? They're, yeah. Now, what are you doing now? Farm sanctuary is another be one next? of my. Uh, I, well, I'm waiting to hear if I'm going to do the first regional performance of Love Loss and What I Wore. That will be in Sarasota. We should um, finalize that. Uh, then uh, I yearly, uh, at summertime, I go up to Forestburg, Forestburg Playhouse, our oldest musical theater in America, and I do work there. I, uh, this year, I'm going to do Murder Among Friends uh -huh. for fun. It's a murder spoof comedy, whatever. And, but afterwards, we're testing Eleanor, which is a one-woman show, Eleanor Roosevelt, Roosevelt, Eleanor, Her Secret Who Journey. Wrote that? I, I, I oh, that. oh, it's all right. Yes. We'll have um, to find out. Yes, we'll absolutely. I look so, at the front page every night. Oh, that's a great thing. Uh, so that's going to be it's very challenging, and, uh, and uh, we've already kind of booked it. It's uh, with the hopes of doing uh, a tour, yeah, a fabulous. tour of that. Uh, but there are, I mean, I, I'm, uh, I can keep going on with the potential projects. There's a wonderful play, a wonderful playwright whose work I'm, I'm lusting to do. And um, I may be able to fly into California between now and the next event to do a uh, stage reading with Robert Forster of a play called One November Yankee that I'm just crazy about. I did a reading of this in the Pasadena Playhouse very successfully also with Robert and uh, they want to do another reading and then mount it in the fall so uh, but I'm I'm not sure about uh, the, the calendar about all these mm. things because I want to do them all you know I have four major fundraising events coming up in Florida for my newest acquisition which is Isla's Acres <laughs> Isla was the name of a greyhound and Isla's Acres uh, contains a shelter of 125 animals, oh, the acreage of which were victims uh, of a Ponzi scheme, uh, person in jail, but we need to buy the land and, and make it, it all refuge. takes money. It all well, takes your, money. Well, your enthusiasm <laughs> and your energy <laughs> and your talent is just overwhelming. I just can't even know. Next time you're in town, because you really are living both places, sort of, and more and everywhere. I'm, li I'm living out of a suitcase. Okay. I hope you'll come back, because you've got many stories more, and yeah. I, we haven't even touched half of them. I, I know. A quarter of them, <laughs> anything. So thanks so much, Loretta. Uh, thank you for inviting me, And much me, good Ronnie. luck in everything you do. Thank you. Okay. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.